how to plan your trip abroad. I'm gonna tell you how to figure out where to go, how to get there, and where to stay. I'm the mad traveler. I am traveling the world, and this is my adventure. First thing, figure out where you wanna go. Now you should already have an idea of this if you want to travel, but if you don't, think about the type of vacation, journey, adventure that you want to have. Do you want it relaxing? Do you want it to be on a beach? Do you want nature? Do you want museums? Big cities, small cities? What do you want? Now when you figure out what you want, watch a travel channel, ask your friends, ask around, figure out where you can get that kind of experience. Once you've done that, you'll have a list of countries, and then you need to make sure that you can actually go there, and that it's safe for you to go there. So, do you need a visa? Do you have to go to a consulate and apply for that? Or can you just show up in the country, get a stamp in your passport, and you're good? After that, is the country actually safe for you to go there? <laughs> now you can read the government travel websites for your government, or for the United States, or actually Australia has a good one, and get a general idea of how safe that place is going to be. But what I would say is sort of weight that opinion, give it 50% merit because they will always be uber, uber cautious. However, if a place seems dangerous, don't go if you're just starting out traveling. <laughs> It'll overwhelm you and it's just not a good idea. Once you do that, you'll have a list of countries and cities that you wanna visit. Then you can figure out how should you get from A to B to C to D and so on. And it's actually one of the most difficult parts about traveling, especially traveling long term. Now the easiest way to solve that, if you are mid-transit, is to go down and ask your reception or ask your host or guide, how do I get from here to there? What's the cheapest way? What's the easiest way? Because the people on the ground are going to know everything that's not on the internet, basically. However, if you're planning your trip from abroad, there is one website that I love. I use it all the time. It's RomeToRio.com. So let's take a look at that website now and I'll show you what I do. This is RomeToRio.com, and it is so helpful in planning your travels that I insist you use this. Simply type where you want to start, let's say Belgrade, Serbia, and where you want to go, Istanbul, Turkey. I made this trip earlier this year. Hit search, and it gives you a map and a little menu over here where you can choose how you want to get there. You just choose which one you want, Let's say I want to take just a bus. I click over here, and it gives me the bus route over here. Now I have to take three separate buses. It tells me where it is. tells me approximately how long each leg of the bus journey is going to take and approximately how much it's going to cost. If you decide you want to drive, you can click that. It's going to tell you about how much it will cost in fuel, and it's just really, really helpful. Now, I wouldn't use this as GPS, but it gives you a general idea of your options. It also tells you how long it's going to take over here for each option and approximately how much it'll cost. Now, let's say I want to take the bus. Now, how do I actually book the bus? Well, click one of these options, and then it'll give you the individual bus lines. These are my three options for the first leg of the journey. Let's say I choose the cheapest then I can go to the actual website or in this case it's just a PDF and get more information on the bus route so you can't always make a booking through this or through one of the websites that it sends you to but it's going to give me a lot of information that I need to book that bus line or that leg of the journey now here's some advertising to try and get a hotel close out of that you can go back, choose a different bus line if you want another one, go to their website, see how that is. Maybe we can book it through here. It looks like we actually can. So that'll make our lives easier. We can get a ticket ahead of time. And that's really the beauty of Rome to Rio is that it gives you all of these different options. Now, I found the pricing to be not usually accurate, but it kind of gives you a general idea of it. So Rome to Rio, here it is. It's very helpful in planning your travels, but it's not going to do everything for you. So don't rely 100% on this. Use it as a starting guide or outline to better plan your travels. Rome to Rio is great for giving you a general idea of how to get between A and B, and sometimes it'll actually plan it out perfectly for you. But what I always like to do is once I figured out kind of how to do it, 
go to Google, Yahoo, Bing, and just search. Search how to get from here to there and see what people who've done it before are saying. That's gonna tell you if maybe there's a special little bus route or a mini bus that didn't show up on Rome to Rio that's going to be better, faster, cheaper. Or maybe you can take a taxi. When I was in Egypt, taking a taxi between some of the cities was the best option and that didn't always show up on RomeToRio.com. So use Rome to Rio in conjunction with searching on the internet afterwards to sort of get a better idea or a complete picture of the best way to get between your destinations. Now the next thing to do is to figure out where you're going to stay. There are four basic types of accommodation that you can choose from in pretty much everywhere that you go. You can get a hotel, you can get a hostel, you can get an apartment or a room in an apartment, or you can stay in someone's apartment for free, maybe sleeping on their couch, their floor, or an extra room if they have one. Now there are four websites that I have used for the last three and a half years. That's it, just four for accommodations. For hotels, I use Hotels.com. It's a great website and it's going to give you cheaper prices than if you just walk into the hotel. I have walked into the hotel before, used their lobby Wi-Fi, and booked a room in their lobby that was cheaper than the price they quoted me right at the desk. So never book straight at the desk at the hotel. Always use Hotels.com. Now, hostels. Hostels, you can have a private room or you can have a dorm room where you sleep with many other people. The draw to a hostel is that it's a very social environment. As a solo traveler, I love them. And it's really, 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 really cheap compared to staying in a hotel. Unless you get a private room, but that's for a bigger discussion. Hostels, I use hostelworld.com. I use it exclusively and it's great. It has the largest selection and it's really easy to use. For apartments or a room in an apartment, I use airbnb.com. Airbnb is great. It's a lifesaver and oftentimes renting an entire apartment on Airbnb will be cheaper than getting a hotel room. In Airbnb you can get the entire apartment for yourself or you can just get a room in someone's apartment. It's really great. It is probably the easiest and most perfect checkout experience as far as renting an apartment goes. Period. The fourth one is staying on someone's couch or their extra bed or their floor. It's called couch surfing and you can go to the website couchsurfing.com for that. Now that is completely free. It's like a social networking for backpackers where you travel, you stay on someone's couch, they leave you a review, you leave them a review, then when you go back home, if you want, you can let other travelers stay on your couch. It's a really great website. A lot of backpackers swear by it and it is by far the cheapest way to travel and you get sort of a more local experience if you do it that way. So those four websites, which all I've used in the last three and a half years, hotels.com, hostelworld.com, airbnb.com, and couchsurfing.com. That'll secure all your accommodation needs. Everything I shared in this video is what I use to figure out where to go, how to get there, and where to stay. If you've got any questions, tips, or thoughts, make sure to leave in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, rate, comment, and stay tuned. There's more to come.